The solar farm project allows us to produce clean water using clean energy. And in doing this, we are reducing our fossil fuel reliance. At the same time, we're providing jobs, education and research, as well as furthering other partnerships that we have. The E.L. Smith water treatment plant produces 60% of the water to the entire Edmonton region. So that's not just the city of Edmonton, it's all of the communities that we also serve. The solar farm itself will be providing about 50% of the electricity needed for the E.L. Smith water treatment plant. And I think something that's not known is the E.L. Smith plant itself is one of the largest energy consumers in the city of Edmonton. One of the benefits of the project is the vegetation. Before 2000, this area was farmed, so crops were cultivated there. Part of the project is to introduce more endemic species. So we are planting trees and shrubs that will increase the overall tree canopy and help with wildlife connectivity. And under the solar panels themselves, we're planting vegetation that's endemic to the area and flowering vegetation that have been chosen specifically because they attract pollinators like bees and wasps. We worked very hard to establish some new relationships with community members through our public engagement and then with post-secondary research institutions like the U of A. The projects that we are working on will benefit science, they'll also benefit the community. People want to understand, they want to know how something works. And so if they can see research that was done by students in an area that, that they're actually familiar with, then it pulls it all together for them. The interesting thing about the project and another dimension is the Indigenous connections to the land. So part of the work involved some archaeological investigations and what we found is evidence of occupation from as old as 9,000 years ago to as young as 500 years ago. This area was also formerly Enoch Cree Nation Reserve Land, which was taken from them in 1908. As such, we also been working very closely with Enoch Cree Nation and have established a memorandum of understanding. I'm from Muskegsik, which is also known as Enoch Cree Nation. Prior to 1908, the lands of the E.L. Smith site had been uh, Enoch Cree Nation Reserve lands, and prior to that, it was an important gathering place for Indigenous peoples of this territory for, for millennia. The most important thing that EPCOR did was acknowledge that it was an important gathering place of Indigenous people. Having that recognition was in itself an act of reconciliation, and it opened up a conversation where, you know, we were able to explore what could reclaiming our, our connection to that land look like and how can we meaningfully acknowledge that that site had meaning to Indigenous people. And one of the ideas that uh, we brought forward was reclaiming it by way of naming it with an Indigenous place name. At the beginning of 2022, we held a pipe ceremony with Enoch Cree Nation and they graciously gifted us with a new name for the solar farm. In that ceremony, the name of, of the E.L. Smith Solar Farm was revealed to us as Kisikau Pisim, which translates uh, in English to the day sun. And really, it's an honor to that celestial being, that spirit that rises to greet us each day and remind us of the gift of life that Creator has given us every single time that we wake up and greet the sun. We still have a long way to go. We have a lot to learn, and this is a long path to reconciliation but I think that the project has really helped us develop better relationships with Indigenous peoples and will help us in moving forward with any operations we have within Edmonton's River Valley. <laughs>